Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Easton Film Festival Presents. Uh, I am your host, Craig Whitford, and uh, tonight our guest is Easton filmmaker Melinda Pollard. Uh, Melinda uh, gets a major asterisk in the history of the uh, Easton Film Festival in that she won the uh, first prize for Vest Film uh, last year, our first year, uh, for a remarkable uh, movie uh, appropriately called Untitled. Uh, Melinda is currently uh, a junior at Bryant College. She's studying business uh, with an eye uh, towards a career in film. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, mm -hmm. welcome, Melinda. Thank you for having me. Um, you have also worked as a supervisor at uh, Hollywood Video in Easton. Mm -hmm. For about three years now. Okay, and I know you're going taking summer courses at Dean, mm -hmm. and you're an internship at uh, Chadwick's. Mm -hmm. Uh, you working on a new film project? Right now, no. <laughs> the summer is my break time. Okay, Spring some, is some the kind of break with that schedule. Yeah. But <laughs> Springtime is film time. <laughs> okay. Well, it's a delight to have you here, and uh, you have also. I know you have an entry, which I have seen, mm -hmm. uh, for the 2003 uh, festival called Rise, mm -hmm. which is uh, a modern version of A Star Is Born. Right. It's the remake of this. Th there's been three remakes of it. Well, now. I remember the one. James Mason. Yes, that's the one that I liked the best. That's, that's the one I really liked. Okay, yes. and then there was a later one, I think, with Chris Christopherson, maybe? And Barbara Streisand, and Barbara yes. Streisand, I right. loved the one with Judy Garland in it. It's just... That's, yeah. It's, you, there's just the one scene in it. It's, it's a, this one's a musical, obviously, mm -hmm. and she's just incredible in it. It was her, really, it was her comeback movie. That she, was her comeback. What year she, was that? 19... Uh, 50-something, 50 51, or 54, I think, maybe? Okay, maybe 54, yeah. Because she had, it had been a while, and it was also, she won, she was nominated for Best Actress, but she had lost it, and she was up against Dorothy Dandridge, that was the first year she was nominated, Okay. Audrey Hepburn, and uh, Grace Kelly, and Grace Kelly won that year, so. I don't know the exact year, so the year Grace Kelly won is a good indication, so she, I thought she was robbed, because she was just an incredible performance, and it's really hard to find on DVD or on video. Really? But if you ever come across it, I really I suggest you watch it. It's excellent. Maybe we could find it on Netflix, which we'll talk a little okay. bit later about Netflix. But um, the original version then, so the James Mason, Judy Garland was the second one. Second one, yes. The first one was with? Oh, I can't remember now off the top of my head. That would have been around 1940, maybe? It was even earlier than that. Earlier it was in the 30s. That. Yeah, okay. I, can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. I had never seen it. I came across it a right. couple times, but I just... I really liked the second one. Okay, and now we have the fourth version. Yes. <laughs> okay. um, and I like your knowledge, too. You're pulling out the names yeah. and the years. That's Thank good. You. We definitely need you on here more. Um, a few things we want to talk about tonight. Um, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the video industry uh, and about trends and, and perhaps video in Easton and where things are going, where they've been. Uh, we're going to do that a little bit. Um, also, I did want to mention that the foreign film series that we've been uh, conducting at uh, Andrews Bakery will be uh, basically suspended for the summer months. We showed the last film uh, this past Friday night, uh, uh, the great uh, Francois Truffaut film, Day for Night. Um, had a good crowd, uh, wonderful folks came and had our usual great time. Uh, we were originally going to run uh, the series through the summer, but we've decided to suspend it and we're going to start up again uh, I don't have the exact date yet, but it'll be in the middle of September. Uh, so you might see some dates around town that are showing some films over the next uh, month or so. Those aren't going to happen. We actually will start it in, in September. And we've got the first three uh, picked, and they will be uh, the cl uh, actually two comedies. And what would you call Run, Lola, Run? Have you seen that? The action E drama E. It's a, it's a good one. Oh, that's a really yeah. good one, and it's in real time with sort of three. It's run three separate times. Mm -hmm. One story shown with mm -hmm. three separate endings. Actually, the actress I'll talk about a little bit later. It's one of my east, one of the top eastern ones. That she's in. Really. Born Identity. Okay. Oh, yeah. born. She's in Born Identity. Yep. Um, Franca. Potent, Potente, I think her name is. Very good. Yeah, is it Potente, you Potente, say the e. yeah. Okay. I think so. I don't know, but um, she was in the Born Identity, and that's a really popular movie. Wow. We got a lot we could talk about. Yeah. Let's see how much we can get okay. in. Okay. But we are going to show the the uh, the first film that we show in the fall will be The Closet, uh, great <laughs> French comedy, and then Amelie, 
Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Uh, another French film, and I actually saw some parallels, parallels between Amelie and Run Lola Run. Mm -hmm. uh, new filmmakers, MTV influenced filmmakers, editing, cutting, right. uh, the way the action moves. Uh, but actually, Bill and I have reviewed. Uh, actually, actually, I think all three have been reviewed. So you'll you'll see us discussing those as we get uh, closer to the dates that we're going to run them. So we hope to see you at Andrew's Farm or Andrew's Bakery uh, in September. And I uh, certainly want to thank uh, our host there, Julie, for uh, uh, allowing us to use that as a venue. It's worked great. We have a new, uh, new sound system there. And uh, we've uh, certainly enjoyed her, her, her great uh, pastries and coffee. And uh, it's been uh, a great success and, and hope to continue it. And we'll continue it in the fall. Um, the other thing that, one of the things that Bill and I like to do uh, when we're here is we review films, uh, but we also like to pick one movie a week uh, that we just want to mention. It could okay. be a new movie, an old film. Okay. Uh, we pick it, we pan it, or we just simply comment on it. Uh, you have one you'd like to talk about? Sure. I'm going to choose The Hours, okay. which I'm sure many of you, many people have heard of its movie with Nicole Kidman, where she mm -hmm. won just recently for Best Actress. Uh, Meryl Streep is also in it and Julian Moore. And Julian Moore was also nominated for an Academy Award this year, but she lost it, Best Supporting Actress, for that role. Uh, Ed Harris is in it. He was also nominated this year. The movie was nominated for quite a few Academy Awards, including Best Picture. And it's really an incredible story. It's based on Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. Not directly based on, but what it is is they take the story of Mrs. Dalloway and they expand it to all different themes. They take two, three different women in three different times. So you have Virginia, Virginia Woolf when she was writing Mrs. Dalloway. You have Julianne Moore when she's reading it around the 50s. And then you have Meryl Streep in present day and she's also reading it. Her name is Clarissa and that's Mrs. Dalloway. It's Clarissa Dalloway. Right. So it's quite, I don't want to say anything about it, it's a, quite a moving movie. You can't go in there expecting to leave happy. It really makes you think it's very dark. And it's just, it's not cheerful. I'd say it's one of the darker movies. It was kind of a trend this year of darker films. But it's just an excellent movie if you want to see. A lot of people just talk about Nicole Kidman and how she wore the prosthetic with the nose. nose. With the prosthetic yeah. nose yes. yeah, not, you can't even, she's just so beautiful in the movie. I, you can't, you see, the nose doesn't do anything. It's just mm -hmm. her beauty as Virginia Woolf and as you know it's Nicole Kidman, it just shines right through. Even with the nose, I thought she was beautiful. I thought I thought it was a wonderful film, and it it takes um, and it's one that probably needs to be watched even initially two or three times, to first kind of get the rhythm of it, where you exactly what you were talking about, where where Virginia Woolf is actually writing mm -hmm. the novel Mrs. Dalloway, and then we go to the early fifties uh, in California, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. California, and 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 we have Julianne Moore reading Mrs. the Dalloway, story, yes. and then we come to present day New York with Meryl Streep. Mm -hmm. Um, and another interesting thing I thought about that film, John C. Riley, is oh. that his name? Yep. Was uh, Julianne Moore's husband, and he appeared in three Academy Award nominated films uh, in 2002. Chicago, The Hours, and the Gangs, Gangs of, New of New York. Yes. Yeah. I think that was it. I yeah. thought he was in another one, but maybe it was just that one. So I don't know if that's some kind of record, but I thought that was pretty it remarkable. It was, yeah. Same thing with. Um, Julianne Moore also was yeah. the ninth person ever to be nominated for two Academy Awards in the oh, same really? okay. in the same year. Yeah, it uh, it's um, talking about John C. Riley and, and being nominated for three awards. It sort of ties in with with the film that I want to address real quick, and that's uh, in that he's I think he's become sort of or becoming the character actor mm -hmm. of our time. Definitely. You know, he's got those wonderful uh, craggy looks, and he's he's able to sing. I mean, Chicago, he did mm -hmm. a. It's just one of those, you, you'll you watch him and you'll recognize him, but you won't know, you don't right. know his name, right. but you don't know what he's been in. He's been in, I really enjoy him in Magnolia. He was that's in Magnolia. what I like. That's, that's I right. love um, yeah. Paul Thomas Anderson, and that's where I remember him from as the cop, the lonely cop. Mm -hmm. Lonely cop, he, he's locked out and he's got some really juicy roles and he's just stayed under the radar for so long. But I think with this year being nominated for, being in three nominated films, I think he'll really... Develop. He's just so excellent. Yeah, he is, and I think he's always destined to be a character actor. Mm -hmm. um, I think so. But uh, yeah, he's his his work this year was incredible. Um, 
the film that I wanted to comment on is Marty. And I'm thinking about, you know, great character mm -hmm. actors of our time. Certainly Ernest Borgnine, mm -hmm. uh, I think, falls into that category. And he played, uh, he won the Academy Award for the 1955 film Marty. Um, and I, I'm not sure if it was his only leading man role or not. Uh, he's probably best known for the television show McHale's Navy. And he played Commander uh, Clinton McHale. But uh, Marty, uh, marvelous film, 1955, and Borgnine had just, uh, a year or two previous, had been in, he had pretty much played heavies, and he played a very vicious role in From Here to Eternity, mm -hmm. where Frank Sinatra had won uh, the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. And uh, that was typical, I think he was called, I think the role was Fatso, and he was just a vicious, vicious guy, and that was typical of a Borgnine role. 1955, uh, Delbert Mann directed the film, written by Patty Chayefsky, uh, one of our great uh, writers for both television mm -hmm. and film. He didn't have a lot of work, but the work that he did was incredible. He wrote Network, mm -hmm. um, did the screenplay for Network. But uh, Borgnine plays uh, this Bronx butcher, uh, the title role Marty, who's uh, single and lives with his mother, wonderful man, hopes to buy the butcher shop, uh, very lonely, hangs out with his pals uh, in the Bronx. It's it's almost it's almost has a noir feeling to it. It's 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 kind of dark. It's a short film, but it Borgnine's performance is dead on, and it's very subtle. And I think it's it's an example of uh, you know the, does it stand the test of time? And I think Marty does. It's a wonderful uh, human story that uh, because of the well crafted writing. And the and the and the rather unremarkable dialogue, really, and unremarkable characters, in sort of everyday situations and triumphing, uh, Borgnine turns in a, just a marvelous performance. It was a film that got very little attention and ended up winning uh, four Academy Awards. It won Best Picture, at Best Actor for Borgnine, and won two others. I remember seeing it, <coughs> dare I say, in the fifties. <laughs> And uh, as a child, and I was very, uh, very moved, you know. And when I saw it again a couple of weeks ago, I felt it again. And I have seen it a few times in between, but I probably hadn't seen the movie in 10 years. Uh, but Marty, absolutely, I recommend highly. Uh, and you can get it at Hollywood Video because that's where I rented it. Yeah, <laughs> you can see me there. <laughs> yeah, see Melinda. Yeah, that uh, actually, um, this past summer they did the AFI greatest romances and I believe that that was, was on okay there. I think it's on a couple of the AFI lists another and interesting I'm, I'm probably I don't know what we'll get to the video industry but another interesting thing about Marty it was originally uh, Patty Chayefsky had originally written it for television mm -hmm. and it was done on uh, either very early television 1952 1953 when they were still doing live drama on television and uh, it was, um, the industry learned a lot from Marty because of the impact that it had. They didn't realize exactly what they had in the early days of mm -hmm. television. And uh, people responded uh, to this production. And Rod Steiger was uh, cast in the title role. And um, also um, Nancy Marchand was in it, who, who her final role was um, Olivia Soprano? Yep. Is that, <laughs> yeah, uh, Tony Soprano's mother. Um, but Rod Steiger, uh, and it was shown on, it was either a Hallmark Hall of Fame or, or one of those very early productions, but they still did live television, live cameras. If you saw it, there's some kinescopes around of it, and you can see the cameras in the way, you can see the microphones hanging. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's very archaic, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a wonderful piece of work. Rod Steiger uh, talked, I saw in a late an interview shortly before his death, talked about that role. I'm not sure he, if he was offered the film role or not. But he, he did it the, uh, the live television role, and um, he talked about uh, doing it that night. The next morning, got up very early. It was done in New York, in the NBC or CBS. I think it was NBC Studios. And uh, his adrenaline was still pumping after doing this live television show, and he's walking on Broadway and 7th Avenue, going into a restaurant place very early. Hasn't slept yet. Truck driver's going by. His garbage truck going by. And the driver yells out the window. He sees Rod Steiger on the sidewalk. Hey, Marty! <laughs> and that was kind of the first inclination of the power of what, of what television could do with good drama. And we don't see a lot of good drama on television anymore. Mm -hmm. I'll vote for The Sopranos. But, uh, 
a couple good those, ones. Yeah. yeah. It like was a real it was a real frontier in those days. And right. there's actually some wonderful work that came out of it. Some of it preserved, a lot of it not. Yeah, that's a shame. Um, but should we talk about the video business? Sounds good to me. <laughs> it's uh, you know, the video industry, like a lot of other businesses in America, has been extremely consolidated. Mm -hmm. So the day, they're not over, but I suspect the days of the mom and pop video store when, you know, that we, when video became something that we could uh, involve ourselves in was, we saw the mom and pops in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty much gone now. Right. We have Hollywood and West Coast Video mm -hmm. and Blockbuster. And Blockbuster. Ones, yeah. So there seems to be a handful, which has consolidated the control, obviously, and maybe some other issues we can get into. And I know that this, do some of the major studios own video stores? Uh, I thought maybe you, you don't know. You're not I sure. Don't know I'm wondering about head, that. No. Yeah. But I guess the first question I would ask you: What what are the trends? What are we seeing in a, um, in terms of what are we renting? What are we renting in Easton? What are we looking at? What are we renting? Action, in comedy, drama. What's the? Well, the folks of Easton are pretty diverse in what they like to rent. You yeah. have a group of people who they all they all like their certain things. But I'd say the most popular ones are the comedies. They're always really big. The Basically, the, your basic ones, your comedies, your dramas, and your actions. The ones that do especially well, though, are the ones that do like all of them together. Like you've got, um, say, The Born Identity, like I was talking about earlier. Right. It's an action movie, but it's a little bit of drama, a little bit of romance. It's a little bit for, for everybody. So I'm finding now a lot of the movies aren't specifically just one genre anymore. Now they kind of take a little bit of everything to kind of make the viewer a little bit more happy, uh, for example. Uh, Catch Me If You Can't just came out this right. past month. Mm -hmm. It's an excellent movie. I recommend it to anybody if you want to watch it. It's not any certain movie. It's a little bit of a thriller. It's funny. It's got some really serious elements to it. And that was very, very popular. It was popular for a long time. And it's still popular now. It's just, I'm finding that people, right now, comedies are, I'd say, are a little bit bigger just because with the recent incidents with like the war and September 11th and I've worked all through that whole time you find people going more for the comedies and with the weather's bad they want the comedy so I figure Easton they really like the comedies and another big group that I find is um, actually foreign uh, when I first started working there you saw four movies maybe we got in one or two titles even the ones that were like, the Academy Award winners but with Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon it was a big crossover hit. Yes. We got a ton of them. I think that was the first foreign movie we had had. I think it's the only foreign movie we've had that was guaranteed in stock. And that really started the trend. And now we get a bunch of them. Like the recent um, Talk to Her, we got a ton of them on DVD and VHS. Because there is... Are people running them with subtitles or are they running the... Uh we have a group that likes the subtitles, and mm -hmm. we have a group that doesn't like the subtitles. Now, a lot of the DVDs, you, we can go both ways, You can right? go both we ways. Can, we now, have options. Yeah. I recommend you watch the subtitled version. Absolutely. Because yeah. it's just not the same. No. And a lot of people say, well, I don't want to read a movie. It's really not reading a movie. You just It takes about 10, 15 minutes to adjust to the reading and the watching. But then before you know it, you don't even know that you're reading it. You're just really enjoying it. Excellent point. I tell people that all the time uh, in, in talking up our, our foreign film series. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the first comment you get. Right. Uh, well, I don't, I don't want to read. It's just it's a shame because people, just because it's not made in our country right. and it isn't in English doesn't mean that it's an excellent film. You're, people are really depriving themselves of excellent movies. What you find too, I think you're exactly right, within, I find myself within, you're, you're distracted a little bit in the beginning, you're reading, you're focusing a little bit on the on the reading, but within a matter of minutes, you're not aware of reading. No. You're really. going with the flow. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if it's a good movie. Right. I suppose if it's a movie that, that, that may not have your interest, then you mm -hmm. might struggle with it a bit. But that's like any other movie. You exactly. Just have to, you just have to take the risk and try it. Take the risk and, and you try might it. like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that's interesting, and maybe perhaps our foreign film series has had an impact on renting. Uh, Actually, they, a lot of the films. ones that have that they've shown, I've noticed that have rented in the weeks past or the week prior to. People have rented it, or they'll want to watch it again. Yeah. Another big group is a lot of people like the smaller independent movies. That's really burst in the past um, year or two. 
they are starting to really explore. Now any, Now it's not just we only have one or two copies of them, now we have a bunch of it. I think uh, people are really starting to embrace the fact that just because it's not a bigger studio doesn't mean that it's not as good. And I think a lot of that comes with the past couple of years. Most of the movies that have won or been nominated for Academy Awards have been the smaller, more independent films. Like you look at Focus Features, they had um, Far From Heaven and The Pianist this year. Mm -hmm. And those were two big hits for both of them. And same thing with last is year. Is The Pianist renting well? Yeah, actually, yes, it is. It's very, it's a, it's an excellent movie, it and is, it has yes. been renting quite well. Um, I believe that people. And now you act one best actor. Yes, Adrian uh, Brody. Adrian Brody. And right, he's yeah. he's another one who, he's been in a lot of movies that people just don't haven't seen him. He was in Summer of Sam. He was excellent in Summer of Sam. Yeah, quite I remember him from that, and I don't mm -hmm. really remember his work. Uh, other than that. He was in um, Harrison's Flowers that came out this past year with okay. Andy McDowell and he was also in Oxygen and he was in another one. Can't remember off the top of my head but he's in he's been in quite a few movies and if you like him he just puts his all in everything. Like I watched him on Saturday Night Live this past week a couple weeks oh, he ago. Hosted Saturday he was, Night Live. Yeah and he was excellent. Yeah. So people love him and they love the underdog story. What I was surprised is, is nobody was affected by he, his win overshadowed uh, Roman Polanski in his, mm -hmm. um, his little controversy, and I was surprised not many people have mentioned that since it's won Academy Awards. Yeah, I think Polanski's work just simply stands, uh, it was a very personal film for him too, because mm -hmm. he was a, a, a Holocaust survivor, mm -hmm. and so there was a lot of uh, personal uh, input um, from Polanski, and um, that, that absolute marvelous film, and I thought with Adrian Brody too. Here we are, we're talking movies again. And, <laughs> right? uh, but that's what happens when you right. love film, you know, and that's what we're doing. But uh, Adrian Brody um, really did put his all into that part and did that kind of Robert De Niro thing. Uh, uh, Tom Hanks did it uh, of changing your appearance, mm -hmm. you know, starving yourself right. uh, really to he, he throw himself without, into the role. He lived without you know? cell phones. He lived in like a one bedroom apartment during yeah. the whole thing. He said he deprived himself of every Hollywood thing that you would think of, even things that normal people have. He completely secluded himself from the world. But that was another Actually, thing. it was good this year, too, I think, to see some, some films of some really strong merit, like The Hours, mm -hmm. uh, like The Pianist, uh, because I think, uh, as you said, after 9-11, uh, uh, perhaps, you know, we're, we're reaching for some lighter fare. We're reaching to be entertained and to be, you know, relieve a little stress and laugh a little bit. Yeah. Um, but uh, the entries this year for Academy Award, I think overall were... Um, it was a really good crop of films, I thought. The, the movie that I, I didn't see Chicago, that's because I loved The Hours and I didn't want to stray my affection from The Hours, but Chicago, just something about it I didn't want to see, which I will come, it's coming out in August if anybody wants to know if they want to mm -hmm. rent it, but my movie also that was really, it could have been an underdog and it should have won for so many different things was Far From Heaven. And that's another movie that was a very big renter this year. But people should watch that one. That's if you liked the pianist and the same type of thing like that. It's just far from heaven. It's just a gorgeously made film, also. And it's another one that could have, that could, that should have won. But Chicago did win Best Picture, I believe. It did, yes. Yeah, I got to tell you, it was my. I've seen Chicago three times. Have you? Yeah, and it's 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 one of the it's it's like a, a great CD of one, mm -hmm. an artist that you like to play over and over. Everyone's uh, told me it's excellent. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to seeing it when I eventually yeah, watch it's, it. Yeah, it's 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 a very interesting piece of work. They've they've casted. Uh, the cast is made up of uh, really non singers and dancers. Mm -hmm. I think which makes it interesting. Right. Uh, Catherine Zeta Jones, Richard Gere. I mean, it's, it, mm -hmm. it, and John C. Riley is marvelous in it. Right. And to me, it's like uh, I like playing. Um, I don't know the best of Barb Marley CD. I just keep playing it. <laughs> right. you know? It's that kind of movie right. that you can watch again and again, and it is very entertaining. It's a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. it, that's the mood you want to be in. You want to be in fun. Okay, we're down to about four minutes. Let's talk a little bit that's more about, uh, <laughs> about video. Uh, what, uh, what was the most popular rental in the last year? What one film? Is there one that uh, generated more revenue than any other? I'll tell you one thing that was big this past year was actually we were really surprised about it was Sweet Home Alabama okay. with uh, Reese Witherspoon that mm -hmm. just came out recently right. and that was off the shelves for about a month and a half. I think that was the surprise one for everybody because we at Hollywood we guarantee movies in stock mm -hmm. but that was a really big one 
trying to think of some other ones that Austin rent. Powers maybe does that blood that actually everything? didn't didn't did rent not. as much okay. as I thought it would uh, Minority Report rented really well right how about the James Bond uh, that, that just came that out that just came out yep okay. and that was that's been renting pretty well right. but um, what I was surprised about was Triple X didn't really rent as well as we thought it was okay. going to right let me see about a couple other ones I can't think of anything right now um Pianist did, Far From Heaven did well, but what the trend I'm noticing now in Easton is that when I started working there about three years ago, I had had a DVD player, and not many people had at the time, but now I'm noticing that DVDs, first of all, our store, if you've been, ever been in it, has expanded to half the store's DVDs now, right. but when you do returns, it would be about 70% VHS, 30% DVD, mm -hmm. and now it's almost the reverse because now people are just renting the DVDs because they like okay, that. Okay, so that was one of my questions. I mean, as the technology changes, mm -hmm. things get cheaper, so everybody pretty much can, for a hundred bucks or less, you can have a DVD player right. now, right? So yeah. are we going to see the uh, tapes being phased out for the new technology they'll now? Be, they'll be phased out. I, they're going to be like the cassette. <clears throat> they're going to linger around, mm -hmm. but the DVD is going to, the DVD is really taking hold. I mean, there's just so many great things about it. There's your special features, there's your commentary, the widescreen where you get to see the whole entire picture, the quality, where especially where high definition televisions are coming out and you've got like the, Dol the Dolby surround systems with like the bows and all those things. The tape, you just can't get the effect of it from the no, DVD. It's just not there, I have no. way too many tapes to want it to go away, <laughs> the VHS to go away, but the DVD qual quality is so far superior over the tape that once you watch a DVD, if you don't have it, I think you'll be compelled to get it because you're really depriving yourself of if you're, especially if you're a movie lover, of key things to the film. Yeah, and the options, on, especially on the newer DVDs that they give you, uh, I recently watched the, the uh, Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver, the director's cut, um, and, and part of it, uh, we watched the film as Scorsese narrates what he was doing at the time, what was going on, how he framed the shot, and uh, just marvelous. I mean, the, the features are incredible. Uh, I guess DVDs are um, here to stay, for sure. Right. And is there another new technology coming along? Well, like you said earlier, it's the Netflix. It's not really a technology, but that's the new one. But I don't. I haven't seen. I actually did a project at Bryant about the qualities and the the newest thing that's coming out right now is the DVD, where they're going to try to make it so you can go directly to the internet and do things like that and download it. They're trying to incorporate more into the internet because okay. they're having problems with piracy. Right. So the technology I found in my research hasn't been anything higher than the DVD, which I'm sure in a couple years they'll come out with. But they're trying to make the DVD a little bit more, more want, we want it more than just because you could buy or download it on right. the internet. Actually, quality. we're now running out of time, but I did want to talk to you about the internet. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about Netflix, but um, perhaps you'll come back and talk to us again. Sounds good. See what happens when you're a movie lover like you and I. You we can, just you often run it. and we start talking about. Uh, about Get sidetracked. Yeah, we really do, but it's fun and it, it's it's fun to talk about. Uh, I think uh, uh, a couple things. Um, I want. I would like to thank, uh, as always, the uh, Northeastern Savings Bank, as always, for their support. Um, also, Clearpoint Communication, uh, thank you for the website. Um, and uh, also the Eastern Women of Today, who were our first supporters. Um, we'll be uh, uh, airing the show, uh, or the Eastern Film Festival Presents show is on Monday and uh, Tuesday nights, uh, as you probably know if you're watching this, at uh, 7 p.m. And that'll be running, um, hopefully, uh, forever mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, as long as we can have great guests like you Melinda oh, thank you but um, we are having uh, this is probably going to air afterwards but we are having the uh, Eastern Film Festival Awards are this uh, Saturday night um, uh, June 14th at uh, Stonehill College and then again suspending the uh, foreign film series for the summer starting up again in the fall so uh, keep watching this show. Uh, look in the uh, Eastern Journal for events that are coming up. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Melinda, for joining us. Thank you for having me. And I'd also like to thank, I usually don't get to do this, but let me thank uh, Robin Sousa, uh, Scott Finnegan, and Ed Hands that are telling me to get
get done. So we're done. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Craig Whitford for Eastern Film Festival Presents. Thank you.